Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special edition of No Holds Barred. This time, uh, these, well, this is the second one we've actually done at this point. Would have been the first, but yeah, long story short, covering the PS5 event, we did that by commenting and giving thoughts as the over the stream as it happened, which I later uploaded to this very channel. YouTube then dropped a hammer on the top of my head and said, no, 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 you're not allowed to do that. So it is now... 5 to 11 at night, UK time, I am current after I have rewatched the entirety of the PS5 reveal stream, I have gone through, I have wrote my notes, much like I did with the PC gaming show, which you can find the special No Holds Barred for on this very channel, right now, it's here, it's somewhere, just, you know, you know how YouTube works, you're a brilliant and clever person, and I believe in you, but anyway, with that said, yes, this is... It's been quite a rush to get this one put together, but I'm pretty confident in my abilities and I think I've managed to do it forthwith and rather brilliantly. So, with that said, I think it's best to press on because this is a lot to get through. So, starting off with the show. Coming off the heels, technically at the time, of the Xbox gameplay show, this was much better. There was plenty of gameplay. There was plenty of trailers. Could have done with some dev interviews. I didn't realise that until after I'd watched the PC gaming show, but I sort of missed that whole stage show, interviewee sort of thing, especially when you realise just how much the devs can actually add to the trailers that you see. There were some devs, there were some people, some dev teams that introduced their, introduced their game, like the lads who introduced Deathloop, or the lass who was part of the Horizon one, but I don't know, it felt like it was a bit lacking, maybe... If I'd done this at the time, then I'd say it was perfectly fine. We had plenty of trailers, and Sony had blown Microsoft away, but the PC gaming show, nah, you see, they've raised the bar a bit. But then again, I am fairly new to this whole covering conferences thing, so take what I know with a pinch of salt, eh? Anyway, with that said, let's press on to the main meat of the matter, the games. Well, okay, technically the main meat of the matter is the PlayStation 5 reveal, but that comes at the end because that's where they showed it. But yeah, the, the lead up to that is a lot of games and a lot of very good looking ones. So we start with Grand Theft Auto 5. Yes, they finally produced a sequel. Yes, we get now. Okay, it's still printing money, basically. GTA 5 is still printing vast quantities of money for Rockstar, so it is of no surprise to me that they have not released, they're not working, at, well, they might be working on GTA 6, but I can envision that we will not see that game for a very long time. So yeah, GTA 5 is coming to the PlayStation 5, probably with some graphical tweaks and upgrades here, GTA Online obviously coming along with it, and interestingly enough, for Every member of G person who plays GTA 5 for the next month until the release, I'm not sure whether it's the release of the PlayStation 5 or the release of GTA 5 on PlayStation 5. It's a bit hazy there because I'm uh, I'm pretty sure the PS5 is estimated for sometime this year, so I'm guessing GTA 5 is sometime next year, but whatever, you get a million dollars in-game currency every month until release in 2021. If you play GTA Online, I'm sure you're happy about that. I played it for a bit and I got quite bored, but I'm not really a big fan of sandboxes, so what can you do? After that is something much more up my street, Spider-Man Miles Morales. I didn't play the first Spider-Man. I've, I've seen bits and pieces of streamers who've played the first Spider-Man. I say the first Spider-Man, the Spider-Man on PlayStation 4. It looks good, looks really good. I'm tempted to play it. I know a bit of Miles from some comic snippets here and there, and apparently there was a movie about spiders in the universe or something, I um, no. Either way, yes, it looks good, I'm going to give that a try, and I really want to play the first Spider-Man game before that, so expect that on the channel at some point in the future. Gran Turismo. Never been, a, never been a fan of Gran Turismo. Never really played it either. I played a bit of it on one of those demo kiosks years ago in, I think, a game station somewhere. Was it a game station? No. Um, it was game station or it was game. It's a UK gaming, cha uh, gaming chain anyway. But I played it in it on one of those Xbox 360 kiosk things. It was all right. It's not really my sort of thing. I know a chap, actually. I work with a chap actually who will probably really love that i might put him onto that game at some point but yeah it graphically it looks beautiful graphically it looks fantastic but then again i think that's part of the course of the gran turismo games 
supposedly they're all about the high detail graphics and the high technical aspects of it so yeah it looks like it's par for the course for them but i could be very much mistaken like i said i've never really been a fan of the series so maybe i'm just talking nonsense wouldn't be the first time won't be the last next up is ratchet and clank okay i've only ever played one ratchet and clank game i've seen let's plays of the first game and it looked really good and it is one of those game franchises that i've it's sort of it's like three of the main game franchises that i've always said that i would play at some point i've never got around to it are ratchet and clank crash bandicoot spyro at some point i'm going to play all three of these franchises and i think ratchet and clank is probably going to be the first on the list considering that the game that they showed I forget, the, I forget the subtitle and I didn't write it down stupidly enough, but the ra new Ratchet and Clank looks amazing. It looks beautiful, it looks fantastic, and that was just pre-alpha footage. From what I understand, Ratchet and Clank's always had a brilliant story, brilliant gameplay, brilliant, gun brilliant guns. So, yes, I think that's a definite yes for this channel, definite yes for me, and I'm going to do a franchise run of that in the future. I think there's quite a lot of games to get through, so I'll have to plan that out a bit. Might be our next franchise run. We've got an opening now that we've finished Kingdom Hearts, so we'll see how it goes. Um, after that, Project a uh, uh, Afia? I'll go, I'll go with Project Afia. No idea what it's about. Some sort of fantasy thing? You're a witch of some description? A warlock? I, I don't know. You had magic powers from the looks of it, and you destroyed something with a tree, which looks really awesome. It looks like it's going to be an interesting game, and it's one of the offerings from Square Enix. So, it, it's probably going to be a very beautiful looking game. I'm not sure what to say about it. There's not much we know at the minute, apart from it's a thing. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing more about that. I'm looking forward to getting more details on it. After that we have Stray. Another one I'm not really sure what to expect for, or from. Uh, well, expect with. Well, I should go with? With. We'll say with. Anyway, it... I'm not sure what to make of it. It's set in a world where humans no longer exist and robots have taken over and cats still exist, so I assume animals still exist. If I had to make a guess on it, I'm guessing based off the fact that the cat, a cat's wearing a little camera pack, a backpack thing, which is adorable, I'm guessing that some hu a human has survived and he's using the cat to observe the robot world with the cat. Could be wrong. I am looking forward to finding out though because I think that's going to be a really interesting game and I think it's going to probably be quite lore heavy. But once again, these are all just guesses from the snippet of trailer that we've seen. So yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to give that one a go. I'm curious how it's going to play in terms of gameplay as well. It wouldn't surprise me if it's a puzzle stealth sort of game. I can't imagine it's going to be an FPS, so that's for certain. So yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be some sort of stealthy, puzzly sort of game. But yeah, we'll find out in time, I'm sure. After that, there was a little sort... I call these tech snips. Basically, they show off a bit, a sort of little teaser, a little taster of what to expect from the final reveal of the PlayStation 5. This time, for this particular one, it was the controller. The... Uh, the I've, I've already forgotten the name of it. <laughs> My brain's frazzled. It, it, I've, I've been heavily at it all day. Um, uh, DualSense. Knew I'd eventually get it. Yeah, DualSense controller. Tactile feedback, looks very nice. If they, if it works brilliantly with the PC, I might replace my current Xbox One controller for which I use on the PC for that. But it depends. It depends on how the controller feels. Because let's face it, I'm going to get a PS5 at some point anyway. I play enough of the PS4 for this channel as it stands. So yeah. So yeah, it looks like an interesting controller, and it. it Overall, it looks like the little snippets were quite interesting. They showed off the operating system. They showed off all the technical buzzwords of high-speed SSD and AMD processor, I think, and blah, 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 blah. A lot of stuff that normal people won't care about. Geeks like me will, but at the same time, geeks like me will have already read through the tech sheets. So, nah. But yeah, so that was one of the tech snips. That was peppered throughout. I've only mentioned the controller because it was a big one, but yeah, these were throughout the entire stream. 
Um, and plenty of buzzwords, as I said. After that, we get back to the games. So the game that followed this was Returnal. I, I see what you did there, devs. Return and Eternal. Returnal. Sort of like Revengeance. Get the idea. Sounds a bit daft, but that's just my opinion on it. Either way, it's... I don't know. It looks sort of like a psych... To me, personally, it looks like some sort of psychological horror sci-fi action-y game. Basically, you play as a female astronaut who crash lands on a planet and then you go through all sorts of horrors trying to escape. You die, you come back to life, you try and escape again, you die, you come back to life. And each time you come back to life, the world has changed, the world has shifted. I'm guessing there's going to be some sort of procedural element to it. It looks dark. It looks... It's so, in some ways, it sort of reminds me of Dead Space. More so Alien, actually, now that I think about it. But game, in terms of games, it sort of reminds me of Dead Space. Maybe they were going for that. Maybe I'm just being an idiot. But yeah, no, I I think it's, it's a tough one for me because I'm not a big fan of horror. I'm, I'm just not. I never really have been. I've played Dead Space. I played that a while ago. But that's more of an action game with horror. It's action horror. So there we go. I might give it the benefit of the doubt, depending on what I see. When they start releasing more gameplay trailers for it, more story trailers, maybe, but it might be another one where I just stick to the streamers on it, to be honest. After that was Sackboy, a big adventure. Re first thing that came to mind with me is it reminds me a lot of Yoshi's Woolly World. And that's not a bad thing, because I think that game is charming as all get out. Not that I've ever played it. Should probably put that little asterisk there. I've never played Yoshi's Woolly World. I've seen gameplay of it. It looks very charming, and by comparison, this looks like Yoshi's Woolly World. So that's the reason. Sackboy. It looks charming. Looks fun. I might give it a shot down the line. I might give it a shot. Maybe when the PS5 comes out, there's there, there's a couple of techish demo-y sort of games that that when the game PlayStation 5 comes out, I might do a stream of a couple of hours on a Saturday and just do like Sackboy and the um the astros party box it, it's later on in the list but yeah there's a couple of tech demo we sort of games there that i'd be interested to play and maybe show off but we'll see after that was destruction all stars first thing that came to mind with me, for me with this particular game was rocket league meets overwatch or maybe fortnite but as i think more about it as i've rewatched the trailer in the run-up for this well this episode it's more Mario Kart to me. It's Mario. It's insane. It's brilliant. It's loud. It's colourful. It's mad. And on my first time I saw it, I was a bit. Eh, but second time watching it, I paid more attention. I think, and it's. It could be a lot of fun. It could be a lot of fun, and I'm tempted to give it a shot. We'll see. We'll see when it's released. If it's a multiplayer heavy game, which I suspect it probably will be. I think it's a definite that it will be. Maybe, but. Eh, it has caught my attention, we'll leave it at that. Anyway, following that is a Pixar movie reborn as a game. At least that's what my notes say, and I'm I'm pretty and past Ezio is quite right. Kana. Oh Kana? I think it might be Kana. A bridge of spirits. Pixar movie come to life. It is a beautiful, very stylish game looks like it could be an absolute blast some of the bits they showed made me think of breath of the wild i it, it part of it looked like breath of the wild but some of the gameplay looks like um pikmin i know i'm, I'm pulling out the nintendo references quite a lot here but it does look like pikmin it's you get these like little black furry spirity creatures i'm guessing i'm guessing they're spirits and you can use them to catapult, you can catapult them at enemies and then they take down the enemies for you and you get a magic staff and you can use it as a bow or you can clout things with it and it looks like it's actually going to be a lot of fun. My own, I, I, It's going to be a lot of fun, I can't wait to play it, I can't wait to see more of it. Probably see more of it before play it, let's face it. The only concern I have is that it may end up more style over substance. I hope not. I hope the devs know what they're doing. I think they're refer they're a new studio, so and they have a lot of background in movies, so cinematically it's going to be brilliant. 
game wise though which is let's face it kind of important for a game i'm not so sure it looks promising it looks very promising but trailers can be deceptive sometimes but i wish it all the goodwill in the world and i hope it's a success because i am enamored with it i think it's going to be a i think if they pull it off it's going to be a beautiful game after that we had Goodbye Volcano High, which I'm guessing is going to be a visual novel. It looks like a visual novel. It's rather an interesting set of character designs as well. You actually you play as dinosaurs from the looks of it. So I can't say it's my sort of game. I can't. I've played visual visual novels in the past. The Phoenix Wright series, well, the Phoenix Wright franchise, the Ace Attorney franchise, I should probably say because it follows Phoenix Apollo. I'm getting that sidetracked, but yeah. Ace Attorney is a visual novel. I've absolutely, I loved that. I've seen played and vi seen visual novels over my the vast course of my life. It's a genre I quite like, but at the same time, I'm not really a big fan of the high school drama sort of thing. So maybe well, I'll say fa high school drama. I play stuff like Persona Five, and I've played plenty of I've seen plenty of anime. So okay, there is some high school dramary stuff, but. Long story short, I'm not entirely sure this is a game for me. Personally, I'm not entirely sure I'd probably enjoy it, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I fully put it out there, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I will watch more information, read up about it, maybe I'll see gameplay, maybe I'll see somebody stream it, and I will conclude, yeah, okay, I'll give it a shot. If I do, by all means, at this point... I can't say it's for me, but at the same time, I think a lot of people, especially fans of visual novels, will most probably enjoy it quite a lot. I also think that, going off the trailer, it is going to be an emotional punch to the gut. I think it's going to be a real punch to the gut. I think there's going to be something that goes horribly wrong, and yeah. I, like I said, high school drama, but I, I've... A part of me is curious to see where it goes. A part of me is really curious to see where it goes. So yeah, I'll keep an eye, I'll keep one eye on it, but I don't expect to see it on the channel anytime soon. Another one that you probably won't see on the channel anytime soon is Oddworld Soulstorm. Now don't get me wrong, I know Oddworld is an incredibly popular game. Uh, well, franchise. I've never played the Oddworld games though. Maybe, maybe if I gave them a shot, I'll really love them. Who knows? For me, I've never really played the Oddworld games. They've never really crossed my path, nor my mind, or when they have, it's never... It's Some of the stuff I've seen has stuck with me. If you want a good retrospective on the Oddworld franchise, go look up a YouTuber called Kadikarus. He has done... He was my introduction to the Oddworld franchise, to Oddworld. They were some very good videos. He's a massive fan. He will probably be able to tell you a lot more about what, to ex what he's expecting from the game, and some things to keep your eye out for and other bits and pieces, but for me personally, it's... Maybe, maybe I'll give it a try. Looks very much like Lemmings, but in that case, then I'm going to spend most of my time fretting over all my little odd-worldy people behind me and hoping they don't get smushed by a giant train as they did in the trailer. Mentioning the trailer, they, oh, the dev mentioned that it is a humorous one. I know the Odd World franchise, as I mentioned from watching these retrospectives, the Odd World franchise does have a fair amount of humour to it, but at the same time, I'm not entirely sure that saying it's very humorous before, sorry, very humorous before such a serious trailer <laughs> was the smart thing to do. Or maybe the humour was in the trailer and it just went completely over my head. Wouldn't surprise me, to be honest, but there we go. So yeah, looks interesting, may give it a try. No rush, probably need to play, well, I think I definitely need to play through the first couple of games first so I can get an idea of what's going on with the franchise, so, yeah. If if I ever play it, it will be part of the franchise run rather than a standalone just playing the game. Mentioning another standalone, mentioning a standalone game, however, we have Ghostwire Tokyo. Um, hold on, ah, uh, there we go. Sorry, shifting around my notes. Ghostwire, I remember, for, as I think most people do, from E3 last year, where they had that little Japanese lady dev who came out and she basically won the heart of the internet because of just how passionate and how excitable she was about her game. And then she sort of left the project and it disappeared into the mists. I, I was curious whatever happened to it, and evidently they've been at hard at work. 
because the game looks like it's come along quite far. It looks really, it looks a lot more interesting now that we've actually seen some gameplay. And I'm looking quite forward to trying it. I know I'm not one for horror, but at the same time, there's something about it. Maybe it's it's set in Tokyo. Who knows? But there's something about it that's gripped me, and I I want to at least go into the game and give it a try. And if they have a demo, all the better, because then I will definitely be able to say whether or not I want to sh want to play it. Gameplay wise, it looks like you're some sort of Buddhist priest going around defeating Japanese evil spirits and yokai and all sorts. So yeah, it looks sort of it looks interesting. It look. Especially if you get to karate chop a ghost, but you know, anime. Um, well, anime, dude, Japan, what, whatever. Anyway, yes, we're moving on. We have. I have no idea whether this is Jet or Jet. Uh, jet. I, I'm thinking it's Jet, but at the same time, the stylistic, the stylistic title even sort of looks like it's got an F at the end. So it could be Jet. It could be Jet. No idea what the game is. Not a clue, not a sausage. I know it's possibly it's set in space, and that's as far as I could understand it. Maybe this is another one that's gone over my head, but for the most part, I'm guessing it's maybe a, an X4 or 4X. I can't remember how you pronounce it off the top of my head. The trailer doesn't explain much other than it's set in space. No idea what it's on about, what's going on. You play as an astronaut finding a new colony for the human race, possibly. Maybe other people have glimmered more from the trailer than I have, and they have an idea what's going on, but I have no idea. So that's Jet, or Jet, whichever. A one that I do have an idea about what's going on, though admittedly this is after the PC gaming show, If is Godfall. Which I mentioned in my previous No Holds Barred covering the gaming show, uh, PC gaming show, and I'll mention here. I'm looking forward to it. I, I, it's got melee. It's got a lot. It's heavy lore. You find ancient armors that give you the power of a god. There's loot. Uh, apparently, lots of loot. Sign me up immediately. It looks like it's going to be a really good game. It looks like it's going to be quite fun. I think I'm probably going to quite enjoy it. It probably may. It may be quite hard. So we shall see, but in fairness, after my run of Kingdom Hearts 3 and getting through all the DLC on critical mode, I am pretty confident in my ability to at least figure out these difficult bosses, even if it will take me a small eternity. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes, but yeah, I think it had a better hook in the PC gaming show than it did here. Here they showed off a trailer with a rap song, which is, well, I'll say a rap song, it was sort of a daisy no we thing wasn't really paying attention to the music to be honest more paying attention to the gameplay showed off some gameplay but i think they did a better job at showing it off in the pc gaming show than here this was just your bog standard trailer of look at the shiny shiny this is what the game here's a basic outline of the game look at some action scenes look at the set piece you know how a trailer works so yeah I, I, it was a bit lighter here than it was in the gaming show and i'm quite glad i saw the gaming show afterwards because it means i can look at this trailer and go yep yeah, Yep, yeah, I'm still looking forward to this game. Bring it on. After another one with a sort of bring on attitude, Solar Ash. This looks like a sort of floaty platformer. Apparently the dev team have made some games in the past and they've been very popular. I've completely missed them. But that's not too difficult to imagine because I miss a lot of things with the gaming industry, to be honest. But yeah, it looks like a very it looks like a floaty platformer. It looks very pretty, very stylistic, and very interesting. And I will happily, happily give this a look when it comes out. I think I might enjoy it. I don't know what to expect from it, to be honest, but I think I'll probably enjoy it. So yeah, I'm going to give that a try when it comes out. Don't know if I'll play it on the channel. More than likely I will. Hopefully if it's not too long of a game, I'll be able to get it out in a couple of weeks. And then that's it. That's another journey over and done. And another amazing game that we have visited. But we'll see. We'll see how it all hangs together, right? After that, we have Hitman. Another franchise I have never played. Another franchise I am curious if it's time to change that. I've never really thought about the Hitman franchise. I've heard snippets of it. It's one of those sort of games that you pick up through gaming osmosis throughout the industry. And it's sort of... 
apparently it's a lot of fun and you get a, and the assassinations are quite entertaining and other bits and pieces never thought to play it though so maybe maybe we'll give it a shot might do as a franchise run don't know from the brief clip of gameplay well very brief clip of gameplay that we saw of it it looks interesting it looks interesting so yeah i might give it a shot might give it a shot down the line but no promises on that one after that is the game I mentioned, a game I mentioned previously even, Astro's Playroom, which to me just looks like a glorified tech demo. I mean, the intro of it is Astro, the little robot character, popping out from the touchpad of a DualSense controller. So yeah, I think this is very much the PlayStation, sort of like, um, Clack or Crunch or Clang or something. That the, the tech demo sort of... I forget, the the name completely escapes me, I'm going to be honest. There was a sort of game that came out when the game, when the PlayStation 4 came out, Black or something, and it was a character made up of all these different bit of particles, and then you run around and you punch things and stuff, and uh, that was basically just a tech demo for the system's power, and I'm pretty sure that Astro's Playroom is just going to be exactly the same thing. Might give it a shot as a sort of dual stream alongside Sackboy A Big Adventure. Who knows? But I'm in no rush to play it, if I'm perfectly honest. Just looks like it's going to be a big party game. Um, uh, da, 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 what was next? Next was Little Devil Inside. Now, this one definitely caught my attention from the outset. I don't know how it's going to play. Well, I suspect I know how it's going to play, rather. It's going to be sort of a Monster Hunter-esque thing where you go throughout the world and you fight demons and monsters and you have a variety of tools at your possession and you can fight them and drop bombs on them and stab them and use a grappling hook and sort of thing. It looks interesting. It, it's an interesting art style. It looks like it's got plenty of humour to it, though it looks like it sort of leans more towards the to a dark humour spectrum than a light humour, so we'll see how it goes. With a name like Little Devil Inside, I'm pretty sure it's going to be dark humour, so we'll see. Could be fun, could be interesting, definitely on the maybe list, so possibly down the line? It depends on what I see, in, like most of the games here, it depends on what I see later on in the trailers and closer to the release when I'm deciding what our next destination is going to be for the channel. After that is NBA 2K21, our token sports game. Pretty visuals, well, I'll say pretty visuals, high quality sweat graphics and all bouncing and somebody breaks a basketball hoop and yeah, I'm not a big fan of sports games. I, I'm just not a big fan of sports in general. I do karate and that's some, well, I say karate, that's a martial arts as far as, and not so much a sport as far as I'm concerned, but that's personal opinion. So yeah, it, it's, if you're into sports games, then I hope you find some joy in that. But for me, it, it's just a sports game. It's just the latest in a long line of them. It might be technically brilliant, but there we go. That's about it. I'm going to stop now before I put my foot any further down my mouth. So after that was Bug Snacks. It's mad. Mad, in a good way, but it's mad. I have no idea what I'm to expect from this game, apart from you eat insects that are actually... Well, you eat snacks that are actually insects, or insects that are sentient snacks, and then you eat them, and then your limbs change, and then you become sort of part of the snack, and that was mostly horrifying when I first saw it. Now I think it might be quite a cool idea. I know it's made from the same by the same devs between behind Octodad, so insanity and hilarity will most probably ensue. But I need more info before I make a solid decision on it. I'm quite curious to see how it goes. Also, going off the trailer, I'm going to say there might be a bit of a darker element to it, but we'll find out. Maybe it's going to be one of these big co-op games. Like I said, same devs as Octodad, so it might have a very big focus on the co-op. So I expect to see some quite entertaining stuff on YouTube when it's released, not gonna lie. After that was Demon Souls. Never played the original. Never really played, I've never played Dark Souls, come to think of it. Or Bloodborne. So yeah, this is an entire genre of games that has completely escaped me. So I'm pretty sure that it, well, if memory serves, 
Demon Souls has quite a large fan base and I'm sure they're all elated that it's come out and it's getting a remaster or a remake or whatever this is. I can't say I have the nostalgia for it to go woo, but at the same time, as I've over the last year, I feel like I've grown quite a lot as a gamer and delving into harder titles and super bosses and stuff. I'm not gonna lie, I'm sorely, sorely tempted to give this one a try. I'm sorely tempted to give it a try, but we'll see. We'll see closer to the time. If I have the time, because I suspect it's going to take me a long time to get through this game and it's going to put a real strain on my sanity, we'll see. It's hard maybe. Definitely leaning more towards yes, but at this point, it's a maybe. A maybe for me. But yeah, it looks good. It looks fantastic. It looks like it's going to be really good. I loved some of the I loved some of the enemies and some of the set pieces. I loved the sort of giant with the massive shield as about as tall as a castle wall and there was a reaper as you would expect from these sorts of things. So yeah, it definitely caught my attention. It's definitely stuck with me. We'll see. Also, how long has it been called Demon's Soul Demon's Souls? I've always thought it was called Demon Souls. Maybe I'm wrong. I probably am wrong, but you know, that's just something that caught me. Maybe it's a Mandela effect. But after that, after Demon's Souls, is the game that really caught my attention, that I have instantly fallen in love with from this stream, and it is a definite, definite yes for the channel as soon as I can get my hands on it. It is Deathloop. And in my notes say it all, oh god, yes. This just bleeds style. It bleeds charisma. It's made by the Dishonored devs from what I can tell. So good pedigree there. It's got, a t it's got a time mechanic. Cool. It sounds, it's fun. Well, it looks fun. It sounds like it's got plenty of humor to it. It's got some mystery as you try and figure out why the death loop's happening. You've got the whole defeat the eight. The, the, you have to defeat, assassinate the eight targets in 24 hours while another assassin who is trying to protect the targets is chasing you down. And it sounds and looks like it's going to be brilliant, and I cannot wait to play this game. Oh god, yes. Give it to me now, please. That said, from the game that I'm saying, yes, I really want to play, to a game that I'm saying, no. Um, Resident Evil 8, or Resident Evil, uh, or Village, the Village. Village Resident Evil. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the, how the title's going. I'm going off the title card, so it'll be Village Resident Evil, but it's our it's Resident Evil 8 basically not for me never really been a big fan of Resident Evil never really played it It's part of my whole like I said, I, I sort of stay away from horror I don't really enjoy it that much So I, I watch stuff like the scary game squad because of the entertainment value and it's funny and it's brilliant and they uh, Fantastic. Sorry. I'm, I'm trying to plug the scary game squad again. Um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, Resident Evil isn't really a franchise for me. I will happily watch it, but it's not one I've ever thought to really play. I can see a lot of people who are fans of Resident Evil 7 being very happy with the way this game looks and how it's going. So, by all means, I hope you have an absolute blast with it. For you, I think it look. I Even I say it looks brilliant. It looks really interesting. It looks like the world of rat... <laughs> It looks like I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to find a way to put the words together. To be honest, it it looks in some ways like a departure from the classic Resident Evil with zombies, but I suppose in some ways that's a good thing because it then opens up an entire new world for them, the devs, to build on to keep things fresh and new and exciting. It looked there. Uh, there was a they called name checked somebody called some Chris at the end of it. I'm guessing that's Chris Redfield. Hey, I, I do know some things, but yeah, I'm guessing that's Chris Redfield, so there's a whole mystery to do with that, and then there's the werewolf for some reason, and then there's the village, which means that you've got more than just the house with the family last time. I think it's going to be a good ride. I think fans of Resident Evil will probably be in for a treat, especially with how Capcom are just knocking it out of the park at the minute, so I'm, cheer I'm, all, I'm right behind you, I'm happy for you, but not a game I'm going to play, I'm afraid. I will watch it, but I'm not going to play it. Um, that's the sad thing, really. 
And from Resident Evil, a game I can understand to some degree, to Pragmata, a game that I have no idea what was going on with. Seriously, there's, there was a robot cat, and there's a possibly robot French girl, and then there's the moon, and there's an astronaut, and then there's the Earth, and a crashing space station. And my first thought when watching the trailer, especially after the design of said astronaut, was... Oh, Kojima is moonlighting again. Actually, I thought it was a Kojima Studio production, but no, it, it looks like it's Capcom. It looks Kojima-esque. It looks like it's got a lot of Kojima influence in it, and I have no idea what the game's about. It looks insane, but we shall find out, I'm sure, close when we actually have more information. I think it's a 2021 release, maybe a 2022. Don't know, I can't remember off the top of my head what the... It said might just be coming soon for all I know. So yes, that's that's an interesting one to say the least. Need more I need more information on that. Not entirely sure where they're going with it. Who knows? Maybe it's going to be some sort of near automata-esque thing, which I would not complain about, to be honest. As long as it's better than Death Stranding. Well, apparently Death Stranding had a really good story, but really bad mechanics. Never played it. Can't say I particularly wanted to after I saw some of the reviews and some of the gameplay and stuff. Looks like it'd be really fun for a streamer. But yeah, anyway, no, sorry, that's Death Stranding. I'm getting off topic again. So let's get back on topic with our penultimate feature, Horizon Forbidden West. Once again, <laughs> never played the franchise. Um, this is a, yeah, I never played Zero Dawn. Maybe I, I'm sort of regretting it now that I've seen the trailer for the sequel because it looks like a really interesting world. I've, I've seen trailers and bits for Zero Dawn, but I never thought to play it. I thought it was, to be honest, I thought it'd just be, oh, it's another one of these survival games. So I think I'm, I kept confusing it with Ark, to be honest. So yeah, I might, I'll probably look into Zero Dawn and I might loop back and play that on the channel before Forbidden West comes out, because I suspect I probably will enjoy it. Because going off the trailer the it looks like it's an amazing world steeped in some really interesting lore, and I really want to get into that. So yeah, I think we might delve into that game. Maybe. We'll see how it goes. I, I, it would surprise me if we didn't visit Zero Dawn at some point in the run-up or post-run-up of Forbidden West. Knowing me, it'll probably be after Forbidden West comes out, and then I'll do a full franchise run off that, so we'll see. We will see. But anyway, on to our final piece, the actual PlayStation 5 itself, the grand reveal of what looks like something made by Aperture Science. And I'm not complaining. I, it's white, it's sleek, it does look something like, put, like it's something directly from Portal 2. And I love that. When I get one, I might just spray paint a big Aperture logo on the side of it. I like it. I know there's a lot of memes about it, how it looks like a router or or a router or however you want to pronounce the word, or the Tower of Sauron or a turret from Portal. <laughs> but yeah, I I like it. I like the I like the PlayStation 4 design. I think it from the size comparisons I've seen of it, it's a big boy. It is going to be it's larger than any of the other games consoles on the market. I'm hoping I can lay it for horizontally because standing it vertically is going to be a bit of a pain with my setup, but not the end of the world. It's also got a disc and a discless version. That's good, because I'm sure the discless version, the download-only version, is going to probably come in cheaper because of less engineering, and you don't have to pay for the CD drive inside of things. But at the same time, you get rid of the Blu-ray player aspect, which some people might not want, and I'm, wonder I'm worried it's going to open the floodgates. I'm worried that... This might be the start, beginning of the end for disc based games, which would be a real shame because I am the sort of person who, who really, really likes having a game library. I really like having a bookshelf full of game cases where I can look down my collection. Downloads are fine, downloads are quick and easy and cheap, but at the same time, I really do love having my game collections. So I'm hoping it's not the end of the end of CDs after this, but it would not surprise me. I'm gonna be honest. Mentioning the previous game libraries, however, that's one thing that has really, really irked me about the whole reveal is they didn't at least once mention backwards compatibility. At this point, 
it wouldn't surprise me if there's no backwards compatibility at all. Because, let's face it, game companies want to make money. Easy way to make money is to say it's too difficult for backwards compatibility. You don't put it in the console. But here, look at this marketplace where you can buy all of the previous games you own again in digital format on this new system. Yeah, thanks for the offering, mate. But I already own the game on a disc or on my account. Why do I need to download it again? And there have been rumblings that there's going to be some backwards compatibility between PlayStation 4, uh, between PS5 and PS4, but some buzzwords about how the architecture has to be built from the ground up or something. I think it's entirely possible, but then again, what do I know? I'm not a dev at Sony. But yeah, I'm hoping that they decide to... Well, Microsoft have already said that they've built in backwards compatibility into the new Xbox, so I think Sony can do it themselves, but we shall have to see. Another thing they didn't mention, the cost of the system. Now, two things come to mind for me with this. One, given the global situation at the minute, and as I can attest as a server engineer, computer components are creeping up slightly, that I suspect it's going to get a lot worse as all of, as everything starts to fight, every worse starts to open up again. But I wouldn't be surprised if some of the cost of the PlayStation 5 is reflected in the price hikes of the components at this point. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they've already got them in full production and they're just building up their stocks for a final release towards the end of the year. Don't know, but it wouldn't surprise me if that didn't play into it. Another thing is the tech. High tech, I've built computers for years. High tech is expensive. This is just a fact. It wouldn't surprise me if we see with the PS5 sort of prices we saw with the PlayStation 3 when it first came out. I, I'm going to take a guess that it's some, going to be somewhere between the 500 to 600 pound mark, probably closer to the 600 side of the spectrum than the 500, especially for the disc based unit. We'll see how it goes, we'll see what we get, but I am I am going to I am thinking it is going to be quite an expensive endeavor to buy one of these. But we'll see. I I've already said I'm probably I'm more than likely going to buy one at some point, so yeah. Well probably on release because there are plenty of games on this list that I really want to try. Some of them might be on PC. If they are, brilliant. I know Godfall is, so that's one down. Well yeah. That's it. That is, I think, well, that's everything from the PlayStation 5 Sony conference from a couple of days ago. I'm a bit, high, bit behind the curve on this. As I said, I did release this all in the full live stream mode because I'm naive and I'm still new to the whole way of YouTube working, even after being a year here. So, yeah, that got blocked to oblivion. So here we are with no hold bar. And I think I've, well, with... The joy I had with doing the PC gaming one, and I've had quite a, even if I'm exhausted now, I've had quite a blast with doing this one. So I think we will go continue on with these No Hold Bards special episodes for the conferences down the line. But anyway, with that said, I am out of here. So to each and every one of you, may you have a beautiful evening, morning or afternoon, where it is around this whole wide world you are. If you enjoyed what you saw here, well, I'd really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button down below. But the decision will always be yours. And hey, if you ever want to catch me live, well, I stream on uh, twitch.tv forward slash guard etio every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 o'clock UK time and every uh, and every Saturday at 2 o'clock UK time. And I've just realized I've fallen into blagging, about, blagging my channel again, so I'm going to stop right there. So, till our paths next cross again, the Vortex awaits, and I'll see you all next time.